Good morning. I'd like to take this time to share a little bit about how the Lord has worked in my life over the years. Uh, this is actually meant to be kind of the beginning of a series, not because I'm a very interesting person. I don't, I'm not conceited, but I have it within me to speak a lot about God's chastening, about the judgment that is at hand for mankind, the things that the Bible says. And I want you to take it seriously and know that I'm, I'm not just, I'm not a negative person. I really believe in the love of God. And I do believe what I heard once from David Wilkerson, maybe some of you are familiar with him. He passed away in, in 2011. But uh, he once said that God has never failed to act, but in goodness and love. And I believe that, but it may not always feel like that at this time. The Lord first really, he made a serious move in my life in January of 1974. I was 11 years old. My birthday is actually March 21st, so it was a little bit before my 12th uh, birthday. But you see that at this time, it, it appears as if the devil was acting. He knew what the Lord was going to do, and he was acting to try to, to prevent it or to hurt me or do something to, to put it off whatever he can do. I mean, when the Lord's choice is made, when the Lord first really touched my life and, and showed himself to me, I was not in church. I was home. And uh, it is a very important thing he has used in my life. But this is meant, again, to be kind of a, a series, because I want you to take the things that I'm saying seriously and understand I'm not just a doomsayer or anything like that. But God has really conditioned me that way. Only too often today, what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing, are just good time in Christians. That's all they want. That's all they know. That's all they think they're going to get. But that's certainly not what we find in the Bible, is it? And uh, our good times are going to come for eternity. And they have been bought by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So it was late in 1973. I'll just call it the beginning of October. Where we lived, we lived in a, a wooded area in south central Pennsylvania. We had 20 acres of woodland. It was not very developed. Uh, we didn't have a, a neighbor for a half mile in either direction. Again, I'm 11 years old. Uh, I spent a lot of time in the woods playing by myself. I had a sister, have a sister, who is about five years older than I am. A half brother who's 10 years older than I am, and he... He had moved out of home when I was eight, and so I really spent a lot of time by myself. My father also, he, he was 39 when I was, when I was born, so he did a lot of things. Uh, he, we did a lot of things together. He was very good, but of course, this just lent to separation. And frankly, being in these woods was just, just fantastic. I think it's such a great way to grow up. Uh, I was doing a lot of, you know, imagination type things which aren't necessarily biblically great you know but it was a great place a great place to be and i love being in the woods i'd go out there after school i'd be in there in the weekends you know playing on our property and stuff like this and uh especially the fall and this would have been the beginning of october we're into fall beautiful the the leaves changing colors and whatnot but this year what happened this and this would have been about three months before the lord put his big touch on my life from which thankfully I, I would never recover you know even though i rebelled against him for a season um i started going into the woods and let's just say this was the beginning of how the lord allowed i just call them premonitions maybe they're not fully premonitions i don't say the lord was giving them but he allowed them he may have steered them my way. I don't know how those things work. I'm not being dogmatic. But I start, when I was going in the woods at this time, I started having this, this feeling of dread. You know, just this feeling of like something is there. Now you need to, you need to know that in our area, in South Central Pennsylvania, there really isn't anything to be afraid of. Uh, maybe getting sprayed by a skunk. There are black bears in more northern, more northern Appalachians and stuff. Someone once said that they thought they had seen a black bear, but both us and our neighbors down the road had big black dogs. 
So, uh, not too sure of that. There really was nothing to fear uh, from anything, but I was having this feeling of fear. And I tried to shake it off. I tried to say, you know, this is just some kind of imagination impression, but I couldn't shake it off. It grew, it developed to the point where I wouldn't go into the woods unless I took some kind of weapon with me. I was worried about defending myself. And uh, this was over, let's say, I mean, it grew and grew and grew until about two months later, in the beginning of December, I stopped going in the woods. I just stopped. And I did not return until I think it was March of 1975. So it would have been like about 16 months later, 15 months later, something like that, which is really strange for the, for how I felt. Nonetheless, I had this feeling of fear. I can still remember though, at one time I was sitting on a rock, just enjoying the beautiful day and uh, a breeze blew by and I just got this terrible feeling of dread. And it was like, it was where the breeze was coming from. And I looked over to see and it was our dog, our big black German Shepherd. And along at this time also, somewhere in there, I had a dream. And in my dream, I was up on our property on one of the paths going to the top. And I saw this big deer that had a lot of points on its antlers, obviously a, a buck. And, uh, and I started kind of teasing the deer, like running at it, startling it, making it but it didn't go very far, you know, I mean, it would go a little bit. And I thought, hmm, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. This is in the dream, remember. And so I turned to go back home and to leave it alone. And I just heard a noise. And as I looked around, this thing was charging down the path at me. And as it charged at me, it became our big black dog. Now, you need to understand, I had no fear of the dog. The dog is with us all the time. But the dog, historically became stranger and stranger as time went on. It had actually mauled two different people. And the only one that was really close to the dog was my father. And it did come after me also. It came after me one time and another time it threatened to come after me, but I stood up to it and it, it backed away. But anyway, the dog was charging down the path. It came and, and jumped at me and was biting me. And, and I met, you know, it, it bit me, but I managed to fight it off. And then I went back home and started telling mom and dad about what happened. And all this time, then the dog just comes walking up like, you know, nothing ever happened. Everything's normal. And uh, so it was here then in March, about the 15 months later. Like I said, I wasn't thinking about it. I just stayed out of the woods because I felt like I was in danger. My mother asked if I would go up on the property to get my father. It was time for lunch. It was a Saturday, I believe. He was up getting some topsoil had some really good topsoil on the land and he would get some for my mother for flowers and things. So, okay. So I just run up on, I just run up to where I knew he would be at, except he wasn't there. So I figured he probably came down the other way, but then I realized, look where I am. I'm up in the woods now after all this time. And I'm like, I'm, lo I'm looking around. I'm thinking a breeze goes by. I'm trying to imagine, you know, but it wouldn't come. There was no imagination. There was nothing there. Everything was fine. And I came to realize later that in the interim of these 15 months, and it probably would have been within about a month, maybe, of this time. I, I can't be sure. That dog, our black dog, the black German Shepherd had died. And we had gotten a younger puppy who was very nice. And uh, she became my dog, uh, part Shepherd, Collie, and Norwegian elk hound, uh, very smart and a very friendly dog. She would bark, but all she wanted to do was have your attention. And anyway, I can see that God was, was warning me somehow or allowing me to be warned of this. And this was kind of the beginning, how, how he would occasionally use what I came to call premonitions. And where this is going is because then later on when I was 13, I had this type of thing. It was a premonition of my death at age 23. And I came to take these things very seriously. It was not my imagination. And I intend to share more about this as time goes on so that you may see the, the goodness and severity of God, which I believe Paul also talks about. I think it's in Romans 11. 
But please, I hope this has been a blessing to you. And uh, just know that God has an interest in our life, but so does the devil. He wants to try to move and hinder God's work even before we know what the Lord is up to. May God bless.